Hey everybody, Joseph Rothschild here, aka MBT and R. You ready, kids? It is time for another episode of One Take Testing, the show in which I attempt to showcase a deck, give you a bit of gameplay, and tell you about my conclusions, all in a singular take, which I have done a great job of. This is definitely not our ninth attempt. Today we're looking at a deck that I've been brewing for a couple of years, but it's never been good enough to warrant a 10-minute testing, and as a result, I've never put pen to paper and started writing about it. I am speaking, of course, about... Pacifish. Now, those of you who are subscribed to Mambo Yu-Gi-Oh! may recognize this list. Uh, it's the most recent Waste Man Wednesday, and I'll put a link not only to Mambo Yu-Gi-Oh!'s channel, but also to the video he made on this list in the description. Um, it really reinvigorated my, uh, painful, burning, bloodly desire to see this deck's thesis realized watching Mambo stumble through its plays and put together a list that, in my opinion, could be vastly improved. Now, the first version of this deck that I ever attempted was during what was called Generation Duels, an old alternate format that Konami supported around 2016. In it, you were allowed to play decks from certain years of Yu-Gi-Oh!, something like DM, GX, 5Ds. The DM one allowed you to play really powerful spells and traps, but the downside was you couldn't play any effect monsters outside of a couple on a short list. Now, I got around that by playing really powerful spells and traps alongside the, at the time, unbeatably strong Monarch engine, and Terror King Salmon, a card that has 2,400 attack and 1,000 defense. And as any seasoned Monarch player knows, the Monarchs aren't a tribe, they're an attack value. So Terror King Salmon is truly the most powerful Monarch of all, and truthfully, look at that flavor text. He is a feared Salmon. He is the master of the Sea of Darkness. It is no wonder why its row is the best delicacy in the world of darkness. Uh, the idea of this deck is to make use of the Monarchs Erupt, which we saw play to great success in the Moron Banlist tournament, to edge out competent archetypes, and go over the top of established boards with stuff like the Monarchs Stormforth. Realistically, I don't know if this is even better than Pacifist, but it's certainly more funny. And isn't that <laughs> more important anyway? Okay, so let's go through the uh, individual cards. We've got three Terror King Salmon, three Pantheism of the Monarch, three Tenacity of the Monarch, three Pot of Desires, one Card of Demise, one Terraforming, three Summoner's Art, three Monarch Stormforth, three Pacifist Phantasm City, three Phantasm Spiral Battle, one Phantasm Spiral Power, Metaverse, three Sea Stealth Attack, three Monarchs Erupt, two Prime Monarch, one Skill Drain, and three Solemn Judgment. What I like about this deck is that Pacifist is super, super, super confusing. And none of the other cards are. They have about one line of text on them each. This hand is going to play itself. Realistically, I think we can beat pretty much anyone just by playing better than them? I don't know. Whatever happens, we're going to have a whale of a time. Let's jump into the games and see what we can get started. Okay, so the first person in EU is going to play against me in 3, 2, 1. And it's King Magic Ruler. King Magic Ruler, let's see what you've got for us. Oh, shoot. Oh, I forgot if they stream snipe, then I'm always going to lose the die roll. This is pretty good. We've got Tenacity of the Monarchs and Terror King Salmon. If what they do is weak to a Monarch Stormforth, we have got this one in the bag easily. They're really thinking about it, though. Oh, God, it's pendulums. Shoot! Oh, think if we had gone first. Oh, even worse than that. It seems to be some sort of Magis Spectre pendulum build. God, it's like I'm back in 2016 all over again. We're playing Monarchs. They're playing Bad Pepe. Popping QB here with Luster Pendulum, the Great Draco Slayer. Then activating a 2 and a 5 scale to summon a QB back. That's pretty terrible. It's going to add a Magis Spectre trap card from their deck to their hand. Okay, that's going to get a Tornado, which allows them to target a monster we control and banish it. Wow, that is really bad. Oh, shit! Speaking of really bad, down comes Ties of the Brethren! This card allows you to pay 2,000 life points, then target a level 4 or lower monster you control, and summon two monsters from the deck with the same type, attribute, and level, uh, but they can't be the same name. They're going to get Glassbell and Ogama, the uh, long-lost brother of uh, Ogama Lime. All right, so a Glass Bell, I imagine, is going to get Ice Bell to hand. They're going to set a copy of Tempest with Ogama. That's the... Um... This card actually sucks. Wait a minute. I I'm just reading this. This does nothing against our deck. Whoa, what an unbelievable rip off the top. So we know about Tempest and we know about Tornado, and both of those are cards that beat monsters. Our monsters are useless! We're going to begin with a copy of Tenacity of the Monarch showing off the Terror King Salmon. Boy, is it pretty! And now I don't know what I should get. I really want Monarch Stormforth, but we can always search it with the Pantheism. Let's get a Prime Monarch. 
All right, next we're going to fire off the Prime Monarch, and who I'm going to show you why this was a feared archetypal engine in 2016. Oh my god, exactly what we needed! All right, uh, let's go ahead and activate Pantheism and Graveyard here. And we want to do this before we Pot of Desires. Uh, I'm going to get Triple Erupt, I believe. Erupt, Erupt, and Erupt. And they can take their sweet time picking a card for us. Now, the only thing that could make this any better, the only thing that could make it any better is if we also found a pacifist. So let's activate this pot of desires and find one. What do you think? Go, 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 go. Chat, it's as simple as that. It's as simple as that, chat. Oh my god, what did I tell you? This plays itself. It, it literally plays itself. Give me the Pacifist of Phantasm City. Of course they're not in the Banish Face Down pile. Let's fire off the Pacifist of Phantasm City, and you know that we're going to follow it up with a copy of the Monarch Stormforth. Let's fire off the Stormforth, baby. And now, to perform our normal summon. Terror King Salmon. Let's go. Okay, so it's got to be a Wind Spellcaster type monster, so either of these are fine. I guess I want to get... Ah, uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, QB is probably more important. Now, to the graveyard they go. We'll trigger the effect of Pacifist here to search from our deck to our hand a copy of Spiral Battle. Okay, uh, afterwards, we can activate the effect of Prime if we want, but I don't think there's a reason to do so. Let's just go to the battle phase and attack with Terror King Salmon. We're going to get into Ogama here. And the only thing that could screw up our fun is if they have the battle spell for Magis Spectres. And it looks like they don't. So they're going to take 19 here. In main phase 2, uh, we are going to set 1, 2, I guess 3, 4, 3, 4 cards. We want to leave one space open so the pacifist can find another uh, battle. And then we'll pass back to our opponent. They'll draw for turn. Now, before they get to main phase, uh, we are going to activate Spiral Battle, popping Kyubi. And this is because we don't want them activating the effect of Luster Pendulum and Draco Slayer, and we don't want them just immediately upon entering main phase one, summoning an Ogama. <laughs> that would be a whale of a bit of trouble for us. They're going to go for the Magis Spectre Tornado here, targeting our Terror King Salmon. That's going to banish it. I'm completely fine with that. Uh, I'm going to chain Monarchs Erupt uh, because... The only thing that matters is that we control a tribute summoned monster at the point of activation. So what's going to happen here is on resolution, Monarchs Erupt will stay. And then at big resolution, we can activate the effect of Pacifist Phantasm City to summon a token to our side of the field. And don't worry, buddy, these tokens are non-fungible. We'll trigger the effect of Pacifist Phantasm City, and that's going to allow us to get nothing. Nothing. Oh, of course. The Spiral Battle and the Power are both in the Banished Pile. Well... Slurp me sideways. I guess I'm the stupidest man who ever lived. No big deal. This should be enough to ride to victory. Okay, they're going to go for Duelist Alliance here. God, that sucks. We should have just shotgunned this other copy of Spiral Battle. They're going for another Luster Pendulum? That's absolutely fine with me. If they set the Luster Pendulum, it's not going to do anything, right? Realistically, I think they probably just don't have very many targets for Duelist Alliance. Going for the ice spell here. Uh, hmm, that's fine, I suppose. Yeah, I don't love it. For sure, for sure. Okay, out comes ice spell. Now, I believe the way this works, they will get to summon a card from deck, but its effect is going to be negated, and that's the important part, because it means they can only go into a 7 at most. We really need a way to actually win the game, and that's going to be something like a Sea Stealth Attack. We've only got 16 cards in deck, and let's see what we're actually missing. Two Sea Stealth Attacks in the Banished Pile. Uh, this is going to get very difficult very quickly. We've got one copy of Terror King Salmon left in deck as well. They're going to get a Snow Bell rather than uh, getting an Ice Bell. They might just be out. Sometimes they only play one copy. Normal summoning the Luster Pendulum, the Draco Slayer here. No big deal. Uh, none of this does anything. Seven, eight. Yeah, no problem whatsoever. Now, the one issue we might run into is that Wind Witch Snowbell uh, applies a condition to the Synchro Monster which it summons. And as a result, we are probably going to have to get rid of this card ASAP. If they summon a monster with a lot of attack that can't be destroyed, we could be in for it. 
Do we have any Stormforths left? I think we do. End of main phase, they'll proceed to end step, and uh, it's our turn again. Oh, great, another Pacifist of the Phantasm City. Exactly what I wanted to see. So we'll go for the... Uh, uh, we'll go for the Summoner's Art here. <clears throat> We're going to grab from deck to hand the last Terror King Salmon. And then afterwards, we can activate the Prime Monarch here, banishing Tenacity of the Monarchs to get it onto our side of the field. Now, unfortunately, that is going to trigger Pacifist, and we'll be locked out of summoning effect monsters, even though we have nothing in deck. Mandatory effects, by the way. And then we're going to normal summon a copy of Tear King Salmon by tributing over the Prime Monarch. So now we once again have a tribute summoned monster on our side of the field. Erupt is safe for another turn, provided they don't do anything. And because I didn't conduct a special summon, it doesn't even matter. Uh, we're going to go to battle here. I'm going to walk over the Luster Pendulum with the Phantasm Spiral Token, uh, because if they have some sort of battle trap that prevents the Spiral Token from staying on the field, it'll just replace itself via Pacifist's effect. Oh, they're thinking about it. Oh, they're thinking. They're probably thinking, oh, how absolutely upset they are going to be that my deck is simply too brain-blastingly smart and their foolish pendulum strategy stood no chance against the power of the Monarchs Erupt. Okay, so this is going to be a sweet 150 over the Luster Pendulum. Next, we're going to send this Terra King Salmon over the last card on board that can give us any trouble. I'm talking about Wind Witch Snowbell. This could be an issue, and I hope that they don't recognize that it's the only way they win the game. Ah, they're going for Tornado again. Shit. Oh, balls. I can't do anything about that. Oh, that is so screwy, and now every single copy of our Terror King Salmons have been banished to the World of Darkness. Oh, God. All right, well, we'll pass back to them, and hopefully they never find anything ever. Uh, I'm going to keep this under wraps because I don't want them figuring out that I'm going to lose the game. Majesty's Pegasus is not good. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, I hope they activate the effect of Majesty's Pegasus. Oh, I hope they activate the effect of Majesty's Pegasus. Oh, they're thinking about it. I wonder how much they have left in deck. We've only seen the Ogamas and the Kyubis. We know they're on enough to facilitate a Luster Pendulum package, so I assume they're on multiple Ogamas. We haven't seen any Bunbukus or anything yet. Oh, God, could we seriously lose this game? I feel like we were just way ahead. Did we really eat three removal spells on Terror King Salmon and get sent upstream? Well, if there's any animal that knows the power of determination, it's got to be Terror King Salmon. Did you know that in the wild, salmons will stream upstream to mate? I just thought that was a fun fact. God, they're really thinking about this. What the heck is going on? Uh, no, just going to end phase here, it looks like. And uh, despite the fact that we could... Whoa, that's so strong. Oh no, that's so bad. I almost activated the Prime Monarch at end step to avoid a scenario just like this one, uh, but I think actually Card of Demise might be one of the very few ways we actually lose the game. I'm going to go for Prime Monarch here. I'm going to banish uh, the Monarch's Stormforth. We're going to special summon this bad boy. Uh, down comes Prime Monarch. That's going to trigger Pacifist the Phantasm City. Uh, we're going to go to battle phase. We do get to walk over the Snowbell, which is extremely poggers. And from this position, I, I feel pretty good about our chances. They'll need two cards to really get anything going, and I don't think there's any chance of that really happening. All right, to the graveyard that goes, and we'll pass back to our opponent. Next turn, we're going to set our entire hand and fire off a card of Demise um, post-combat. Set one pass, exactly what I like to see, buddy. They'll pass back to us. It's a Stormforth off the top. Maybe the worst possible card we could have drawn, but it does activate for nothing. We're going to go ahead and fire that bad boy off. We're going to fire off the Pacifist Phantasm City as well. We're going to set this Pot of Desires, and ideally, we will be drawing into some number of uh, the count the Continuous Trap. Nope. Just a, a bunch of literal garbage. Well, no reason to go to the battle phase now. To the graveyard goes all of this. Where are my good cards? What is going on? 
I guess we screwed this up also by not attacking first. God, I am so bad at Yu-Gi-Oh. What is going on here? In which glass bell off the top is pretty bad. I want to see if they're going to activate the effect. They will. We'll flip up skill drain here. So they must know that I have another copy of a Phantasm Spiral Battle Set, unless they have the read that I banished three of my four Phantasm Spiral Traps. Oh, they're thinking about it. All I need, all I need is Sea Stealth Attack. One Sea Stealth Attack and this entire thing is locked up. But until I get to that position, we're just kind of staring at our opponent, hoping that they blink. Going for the Majesty's Pegasus here. We are going to fire off the Phantasm Spiral Battle in response. And it looks like they don't have anything to deal with that. That's their entire board cleared, and I imagine it's also the end of their turn. Oh my god, we're actually going to do it. God, you got to be kidding me. At least it'll prevent us from decking ourselves. Uh, to the battle phase, we go, uh, attack directly, and attack directly. Where are the good cards remaining in the deck? I know I have some. 1750, baby. We've already missed lethal once with our stupid play. Main phase two. We'll set the Prime Monarch, and good luck to our opponent and their useless Magus Spectre Tempest. Pot of Prosperity off the top. You have got to be shitting me. Oh, man, that's rough. Oh, my God. Oh, okay, okay. No big deal. Uh, we do have this. And unfortunately, I think we do probably have to fire off the judgment here. Go into the battle phase. Oh, are we going to see a very desperate evenly matched? Nope. And it looks like that is going to be all she wrote. We'll proceed from draw phase to the battle phase and Phantasm Spiral Token. Do what the Dark World Fish could not take down my foolish, foolish pendulum opponent. <sighs> So here's the deck. Uh, I love it. I think this uh, rocks. Uh, Terror King Salmon is an extremely uh, powerful card um, just because it has the Monarch stat line. It's a normal monster. It can be searched off of Summoner's Art. It triggers Pacifist the Phantasm City, and it eats an opponent's monster in tandem with a Stormforth. Unfortunately, I don't think this resolves any of the really big problems with Pacifist the Phantasm City. It gives it a more consistent access to Skill Drain and maybe a second beater that you occasionally are able to go into, but at the end of the day, the reason Pacifist is losing is because it's such a reactive strategy. And and an opponent that will uh, completely wipe you over if you give it a chance to be proactive like Dragon Link, or an opponent that's very comfortable just sitting on its ass until it finds a critical mass of counter spells like Eldlich will absolutely walk all over you, and that doesn't change. Um, thanks again to Mambo Yu-Gi-Oh for reigniting the passion for Terror King Salmon that I feel in my gut. Uh, thank you to uh, Skyhawk for refining this deck over a course of years, and thank you to Cinnamon Toast Crunch for including Terror King Salmon Tales in your newest cereal product. I will see you next Sunday for another episode of this. Thank you.